Hello everyone, welcome to the 33rd lecture in the course Design and Engineering of Computer Systems. So, in this lecture we are going to continue our discussion on performance engineering. So, let us uh, get started. So, so far this week we have understood what is performance, what are the parameters you vary and what are the metrics you measure when you do a load test, how to run a load test, the types of load tests and in the previous lecture we have seen how to do various back of the envelope calculations in order to do a sanity check of your load test results. And uh, we have also seen basics of how do you tune some system parameters in order to optimize your hardware resource usage. Now after you have done a load test and you have measured performance, if you find that you know your performance numbers make sense and you can handle all the load coming into your system, then you are done, nothing else needs to be done, you know, you're, you expect only a load of you know 50 requests per second, your system already has a capacity of 100 requests per second, done. But if you find that no, no, I expect lot more load into my system and my capacity is not enough, then you have to optimize your system to improve its capacity. Okay. So, how do you go about doing this? So, first you will find out which is the bottleneck resource at your bottleneck component. You will monitor the utilization of all the hardware resources to find that which is my bottleneck resource. And then you will use what are called profiling tools. So, these tools will help you identify why is your resource utilization so high. For example, if your CPU utilization is 100 percent, you know, in uh, handling uh, certain traffic, then your profiling tools will tell you where is the CPU time being spent, why is it so high. And once you find out the root cause, you know, then you can fix the root cause, you can apply various uh, techniques to, you know, fix the root cause and you can improve performance. Okay, so, this is how, this is what we are going to study in today's lecture, how do you use these profiling tools and what are some of the techniques to optimize performance. And note that if you improve performance of one component, bottleneck will shift to some other component. So, you, it can never be the case that you have fully eliminated all bottlenecks. Suppose your database is the bottleneck and your, you know, you improved its capacity from 100 requests to 1000 requests per second. Then some other component that has a capacity of 500 requests per second, now that becomes the bottleneck. Then the bottleneck will shift there, you optimize that, then the bottleneck will shift somewhere else. So, at some point there will always be the slowest component in a system at any point of time, right. So, completely eliminating bottlenecks is something that can never happen. Only thing you can do is you just keep on improving your bottleneck performance until you can handle all the load coming in. And once you are satisfied that no matter whatever load I expect I can handle once you reach that level of comfort, your performance engineering stops, right. So, this is an iterative process until your performance matches whatever is the expected load into your system, okay. So, now let us uh, see how you monitor the utilizations and use profiling tools to observe what the root cause of your problem is and some techniques that you can use to mitigate this root cause, okay. So, the first important thing is you know at your bottleneck component some hardware resource has would have been at full utilization. So, the question is which is that hardware resource. So, what you have to do is you have to monitor the utilization of all the hardware resources in your system to find out which one is getting exhausted that is limiting the performance of your system. So, there are various tools available to monitor CPU utilization you know for example, top is a very commonly used tool in Linux that will tell you for each CPU core what fraction of the CPU you know is it 100 percent utilized, 50 percent utilized for each CPU core it will give you that number. By this you know is my CPU fully utilized is that why I am not able to handle more requests than my capacity or is something else the problem. Then there are tools to monitor memory usage you know if you have 8 GB or 4 GB of RAM in your system what fraction of that RAM is used by users, by OS, what fraction is free, you know are you running out of memory in your system, is that why your system is slow. So, for example, the free command in Linux will tell you that. Then there are other tools to monitor memory bandwidth utilization, note that this is different from memory usage. For example, I could have you know some 8 GB of memory, I this monitoring memory usage will tell me what fraction of this is occupied and what fraction is free. On the other hand memory bandwidth is, so there is this memory bus between the CPU and uh, DRAM that can only serve you know some uh, uh, megabytes per second or some gigabytes per second. This bus has a certain capacity and how much of this bus bandwidth is utilized and how much is free. 
For example, you can only be using a very small fraction of your memory, but you could be using this all the time, you know accessing this continuously so that this bus becomes busy. Or you could be using your entire memory, but this bus is lightly utilized, okay. You are only rarely, you filled up your entire 8 GB, but you are only very rarely accessing it, so this bus is free, okay. These are two different things, the actual memory usage and the memory bandwidth usage. Both of these you should monitor to see which one is the bottleneck and especially when you have you know local memory versus NUMA memory. So, this non-uniform memory we have studied you know uh, to some CPU cores some uh, memory is closer to some other CPU core some other memory is closer. Therefore, you have to monitor what is the usage of this local memory, what is the usage of you know the memory that is farther away, is any of this becoming the bottleneck all of this you have to monitor. Then you also have to monitor utilization of I O devices. So, every I O device can only process data at a certain rate you know the disk can only do like you know so many reads per second, so many writes per second it has a capacity and if you are exceeding that capacity then your system performance will hit a bottleneck. So, you can monitor all of this you know there are tools like I O stat and Linux that tell you what is the rate at which your device is you know reading or writing data all of these you monitor and from all of these things you will be able to find out which hardware resource is saturated that is limiting the performance of my bottleneck component. Is it CPU, is it memory, is it memory bandwidth, is it the disk, is it the network card, which of these is the performance bottleneck, okay. Now once you identify which hardware resource is saturated, the next question comes up why, why is that hardware resource saturated, why is my CPU at? 100 percent utilization, where is the CPU spending all its time and what is causing this high utilization? That is the next question and for that we use what are called profiling tools, okay. So, there are many profiling software available, you know here are some names of the commonly used ones, but there are many others also out there. So, what these profiling tools do is these profiling software run alongside your application software on the computer and they will monitor the execution of the program and they will give you various pieces of information about the execution of your program. For example, these profilers will count various events you know like hardware events, software events like cache misses, page faults, context switches all of these things that are happening in your system they will count. And they will also help you attribute these events to parts of the program. For example, you can find out that this function in my code is causing a lot of cache misses. This part of my code is causing a lot of page faults. You can do this level of analysis. You can count events, you can attribute the events to parts of your code. Then this will help you understand you know how is my hardware resources being used, how is CPU time spent, where is the CPU spending a lot of its time in which functions, which parts of the code and you know which part of the code is using which hardware resource all of this you can understand. So, from this profiler output then you will be able to identify which are the parts of the code that are performing inefficiently and what hardware software events are happening that contribute to poor performance, is it poor cache performance, is it page faults, what is the issue, which part of the code is causing that issue. So, once you get do this analysis then you can go about optimizing your system. So, if your system's performance is poor you cannot just stare at you know the million lines of code and wonder what should I do about it. These profilers will help you pinpoint saying okay here is the problem and you can go about optimizing that one part, okay. So, what are the events that these profiling software uh, collect? So, they collect statistics about various type of hardware and software events and these statistics are collected you can either do per thread, per process, for each CPU, system wide at many granularities. You can specify most of these tools give you the flexibility to specify at what granularity I want to count these events and what all events do I want to count, okay. And the set of events are you know you have various hardware events that usually the CPU will maintain itself will maintain some count in various registers and these profiling tools will read those CPU registers and print it out to you in a nice format that you can understand. So, the various events that are counted are of course the number of CPU cycles you know every CPU has a certain clock you know a certain frequency at which uh, the clock runs which counts the number of CPU cycles right you can just count the number of CPU cycles happening 
Of course, this is the default event there is nothing much interesting you know your CPU's uh, specification you know how many cycles are there. But the more interesting events are how many instructions are executed for every CPU cycle is your CPU efficiently executing a large number of instructions or is it executing only very low number of instructions for uh, for every CPU cycle. So, this instructions per cycle is a very important metric to understand the efficiency. So, why will this instructions be low for example, if your CPU is waiting for a lot of uh, time for memory access your cache performance is very poor for a lot it is spending a lot of time waiting for uh, data to be fetched from DRAM. So, all of these things there could be many reasons why your CPU is not executing as many instructions for every cycle as it should. So, this instructions per cycle will tell you you know is your CPU efficient or is it not being very efficient. Then you have various cache misses you know your CPU has many levels of cache and at each level of the cache what is the hit rate, what is the miss rate all of these you will find out. Then other things like you know TLB misses and your ca your hardware does various optimizations like you know prefetch things into cache, how many of those prefetches have worked, how many have they not worked. So, if you take an architecture course you will understand lot more about what are all the you know uh, smart things that your CPU is doing and you can measure all of those counters to see are all of these optimizations like caches, TLB everything working well in the CPU or is it not working well. So, there are all of these hardware events that you can monitor and some of the most important ones are you know your cache misses and TLB misses and instructions per cycle. So, these will tell you is my system being efficient or not. Then there are also software events you know these are maintained by the OS like page faults, context switches you know is my system seeing a lot of page faults is that why performance is poor. So, you can count all of these events using profiling tools. And what is more these profilers will also help you attribute the event to specific portions of the code. So, whenever an event occurs this profiler can note down what is the program counter value at which this event has occurred. So, now it will help me identify oh the cache miss is caused due to this part of the code. Of course, these events occur at a very high frequency you know. So, every time an event occurs you cannot uh, you know store the program counter somewhere that will be too much overhead. So, what these profilers do is they sample they do what is called sampling. So, for you know every 100 cache misses I will see what the program counter value is something like that. For some subset of events information about the code responsible for the event is also captured like the program counter. And this profilers will not just dis, uh, you know display some uh, hexadecimal address of the program counter, but they will actually convert it to a function name or something also for easy readable, uh, readability of the user. So, you know that it is actually this function in my code that is responsible. Okay? So, by sampling this uh, program counter value periodically we will know which part of the code is consuming, what fraction of CPU cycles you know every time for every few CPU cycles if you uh, uh, profile your uh, program counter the program counter was here once here once here once here 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 most of the times the program counter was here then you know that this function is the one that is actually very time consuming and very few times in very few samples the program counter was in other places. So, you know that this parts of your code these functions are not taking up a lot of time whereas this function is taking up a lot of time. So, by sampling these program counter values you will know where are CPU cycles being spent. By sampling program counter values on cache misses you will know which part of the code is responsible for cache misses things like that right. So, not just counting events, but you are also able to attribute events to specific parts of the code. So, that this is a starting point for you to optimize your code you will know which part of your application needs optimization. So, now let us uh, briefly see now that you have you know monitored hardware resources you found out which resource is the bottleneck then you have profiled your code to try and you know understand which specific parts of your code are performing suboptimally. Once you have looked at all of these measurements you can go ahead do some performance optimizations. What optimization you do will depend on what uh, your measurement results are like. But in the next few slides what I am going to do is uh, point you to some of the common patterns, common issues that occur in systems and some of the common optimizations that are undertaken. So, of course, there are many more optimizations that can be done and you know in one lecture I cannot cover all of them this is a full course by itself, but I will strive to present to you the most common optimizations that people do once they profile their system. Okay. Of course, the most common thing is most systems will have a CPU bottleneck you know the CPU cores are fully uh, saturated by the application and then 
uh, you will profile the code to see which specific functions in your application are using up most of the CPU and then you will try and optimize those functions. For example, if there is some function, some library uh, you know that a linked list library that is actually using up a lot of CPU then you might uh, try and move to a better implementation of the linked list or if it is a you know a hash table or a map library that is using up a lot of CPU you might move to a better library or in your code if you have written stored data in some linked list that is being traversed every time and most of your CPU cycles are spent traversing the linked list suppose that is what you find out then you might replace this linked list with a more efficient data structure right. Once you pinpoint the source of the inefficiency you can go and rewrite that code optimize that code use better high performance libraries and try and eliminate this performance issue. But if sometimes not just user code, sometimes even OS code might also be consuming a lot of CPU cycles. In such cases of course, you cannot replace your operating system that easily, but you can optimize wherever possible. For example, if you find that a lot of CPU time is being spent in handling interrupts, you have a network card, a high speed network card, it is getting a lot of packets and most of your CPU time is spent in handling interrupts then what you can do you can optimize your device driver you know we have seen this there are device drivers like the nappy driver that generates fewer interrupts or you know if all interrupts are coming to one CPU core using techniques like RSS this also we have seen before you can split your interrupt processing to multiple CPU cores right. So you can optimize your OS also in some ways or if your file system file IO is the bottleneck op use a better file system. If context switching overhead is the bottleneck, tune your CPU scheduling parameters, tune your scheduler algorithm so that you do not have so many context switches. If you find that memory allocation malloc is the bottleneck, then you use a better memory allocator, you know, instead of doing this dynamic uh, general purpose malloc, right. So, depending on where your problem is inside the in the system software also, sometimes you will be able to optimize it. So, this is one set of uh, techniques. Now what happens if your memory usage is too high, you know you have all the RAM in your system is somehow being used and because of that we have seen this before. What happens if your memory is uh, too fully occupied, you will have thrashing. What is thrashing? Some of your pages will be sent to the swap disk and every time you want to access a page there will be a page fault or most of the times there will be a page fault you have to you know send some other page to the swap space get this old page back then this you will send to swap space get something else back right. You are constantly doing the swapping to disk and servicing page faults and all the time is spent uh, handling this and not actually doing application work. So if you are using too much memory in your system this can happen this is called thrashing. Then how do you handle this if your perf profiler shows that a lot of time is spent in swapping and uh, it shows that page faults are high. Then you can try and reduce the size of your in memory data structures, maybe not store everything in memory but store them on disk wherever possible. And you can also improve the locality of reference in your program. So suppose I have you know access some parts of my memory, let me try and finish all the processing on this memory before moving on to some other part. So if my current set of pages that I am accessing the working set size is small then these will be in memory most of the time I do not have to swap them from disk ok. So improve locality of reference that is try and repeatedly use whatever memory you have used so that you are actively uh, being used whatever memory is actively being used the working set size is small that is one technique. Then if you find that you actually have poor cache hit rates and your memory bandwidth usage is high, okay. the total memory consumed is low but the memory bandwidth to read and write this DRAM that is being consumed. Why is that being consumed because you know the CPU will uh, check caches and if it is not there in cache then it will go to DRAM and if your cache hit rate is very low, your cache is not supplying most of the data then most of the time you are going to DRAM and this bandwidth will become the bottleneck. If that is what you find this utilization of this bandwidth is high and cache hit rate is poor if that is what your profilers tell you. What you can do is we have studied this before you know how to optimize your cache uh, usage of your uh, system. You can d design your data structure such that they fit into caches, you can write your code such that you know your locality of reference is improved whatever you have got into cache you are trying to access that first instead of jumping around in your code. You can improve your TLB hit rates, you can try to sequentially access your memory so that you know the CPU 
uh, hardware today does prefetching, you know, it tries to fetch ahead of time whatever memory things you will use. So, all of these things you can do in order to improve your cache performance and we have studied this in a lot of detail when we were studying uh, the memory management part of the course, right. So, depending on what the problem is, if this is the problem then you do this optimization. Then there are many other optimization techniques also. For example, compilers themselves do a lot of optimizations. When the compiler generates the machine code, the binary executable, it itself will do some optimizations in order to use the underlying hardware better. So, you can when you compile your code, you can provide various options to the compiler to do these optimizations. And there are also other techniques being used today where some part of your application code can be actually offloaded to some special pieces of hardware like for example, you have the GPU called the graphics processing unit. Anytime you have to do any graphics processing like you know video processing or you know displaying videos, rendering videos, all of that you can actually offload it to the GPU. The GPU will do it much faster than running some software on the CPU, okay. So, there are special hardware accelerators available for specific applications, you can use those. If you are using up all the CPU to do video processing, then this uh, it will be very inefficient. Instead use the GPU to do the video processing. Similarly, when IO is the bottleneck, you know suppose the application is doing a lot of IO to from disk or something, this is the bottleneck. Then what you can do is you can maybe use a cache like the disk buffer cache. You can store the results of IO somewhere so that they can be accessed faster instead of going to the disk, right. So, caching is one important technique that you can use. Then if nothing else works, you know you have tried everything, all possible things, nothing else works, still your hardware's resource is like fully utilized, its performance is not improving, then the only option is you just add more hardware to your system. You know no matter what you do, your CPU is 100 percent utilized, your system is only doing 100 requests per second, but you want to do 200 requests per second. Then what do you do? You just add more CPU cores to your system or you just add another machine and you know run your system in two different machines, right. So, th that is called scaling. Vertical scaling is to one machine itself add more CPU cores. Horizontal scaling is add another machine altogether with extra CPU cores, right. So, this is the last and final option. I have done the best possible I can with my resources. I cannot do anything more. Then the only way to improve performance is add more resources. So, this caching and scaling both of these we are going to study in the next two lectures. So, that is all I have for today's lecture. In this lecture what I have told you is how you can use a software called profilers to understand the performance of your system and pinpoint where is the performance bottleneck and I have described to you some general techniques that uh, people follow in order to fix this performance bottleneck. In the next couple of lectures also we are going to see these uh, some of these techniques like caching and scaling in more detail. Okay. So, as a programming exercise you can try and install one of these profilers for example, perf, use it to profile a simple program that you have uh, written and actually see the output of the profiling. Suppose you have written a program where some heavy computation is being done in a function, then you can actually see the profiler output that it will tell you that this function is where most of the CPU cycles are being spent, right. So, get some hands on experience in using profilers and understanding the output of these profilers. So, that is all I have for uh, this lecture, let us continue our discussion in the next lecture, thank you.